proposes to derive left ventricular function. So there are many echo parameters that reduce the ventricular function, especially the left ventricle. But what I am interested is there are six important parameters you can derive on echo, and those are ejection fraction using the parasternal lang axis, ejection fraction using the parasternal short axis, and also the E peak septal separation or parasternal long axis. Each one I am going to reduce. Other parameters that can help in deriving the ventricular function are map set, that is mitral annular plane excursion. Other two parameters are one is global longitudinal straining and ejection fraction using the Simpson biplane or planes. So each one I am going to reduce. So if you look at the parasternal long axis, so this is a parasternal where the probe is kept. The probe is kept here in the left second intercostal space joint. Okay, second or third intercostal space, long axis of view of the heart where you can see the left atrium, left ventricle, aorta, and the right ventricle here. What I'll do is I choose the M mode. You can see here the M mode. This is the M mode. This is the M mode. I will take this cursor. You can see the cursor there. Yes. I take the cursor point and you can see the mitral valve here. Yes, sir. This mitral valve, I'm going to cut it. This is what you see. This is the parasternal long axis, the M mode cutting at the tip of the mitral valve. That is anterior leaflet of the metal valve. Now, this is very useful to look at end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. How do we get it? Now, this is a caliper. You can see the caliper here? Yes, sir. This is the caliper. And I press the caliper there. This is the end diastolic volume. You can see this? Yes, sir. And from there, you take till the posterior wall of the this is end diastolic volume. The end systolic volume here is see. This is the end systolic volume. So you can also show that properly. Yeah. You can see this. Even the posterior wall of left atrium is going up, you know. Right, sir. That is the end systolic volume. So what you see here, I can have a pen. Yes. I like it. This is the end diastolic volume. This is the end systolic volume. So end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume divided by end diastolic volume give you a fraction shot. When you cube all these parameters, you get the ejection fraction. This is one of the ways we use to look at the ejection fraction. So the other component I was talking to you about is the E peak septal separation. What is septal separation? See, what you see here, this is the septum, correct? Yes, this is the E peak. E peak and A peak. You have got? And what I do, this is the mitral valve. What I do here is, I take the caliper. This is the E component. Okay? And this is the septum. How much the septum is separated from the e, e peak of mitral valve. So there are two peaks, you know, E peak and A peak. E peak is this. From here, the peak of this E part of the mitral valve till the septum is called as E peak septal separation. This is another parameter is taken in deducing the left yes, sir. We have parasitic long axis, correct? The probe is kept in the left second intercostal space facing to the right shoulder. You get this image, correct? Yes, sir. Now, what I do is I rotate this. You see what I am doing? I am rotating this. And 
when I rotate, what happens? The marker is also rotated and it is looking at the left shoulder joint to get this image. This is called parastonal short, short axis. axis. This is the basal level. What I do is, I want, it's called fish mouth appearance of my turban. I will take the cursor again here. Take the cursor again here. I will cut the mitral. I will take the M mode here. Can you see that? Yes, sir. This is how you get this. So, this is deriving rejection fraction on parasitic short axis. So, what I will do is now again I will take the caliper. You can see this. This is your end diastolic volume. Okay, and you have got another one. This is your end systolic volume using the same formula ED minus ESC by ED. You get your fraction shopping, and if you you get ejection fraction. So, this is how you derive. Ejection fraction on short axis. What I did, I took the short axis and I cut the mitral valve there again and then I got this. Clear? Yes. Now, now uh, uh, ejection fraction on parastone long axis and also on parastone short, short axis. EPSS we could derive on parastone long axis. Clear? Now we move on to the other three. Now, mitral annular plane systolic expression. What is NAPSIC? Now, again, you see, I am keeping the probe in the apical area with the marker facing to the left. You can see that facing to the left, and you get four chamber view like this. This is the four chamber view. Can you see that? All the four chambers you can see? Yes, sir. Now, what I'll do, I'll take the cursor. I'll take the cursor here. This is the mitral right. valve at the left aspect of the metal right. What I'll do is, I'll do more. Yeah, this is what you see. So, what you see. Here is the excursion. What is the excursion? So I'll take the caliper here. See from here till this point. This is mitral annular systolic. How much it actually it, it indicates an important aspect of the contraction of the how much it does the excursion. Okay. So, here is a big excursion or small excursion. Yes. Depending on that, we know the ejection fraction. This is the map set. Okay. Are you clear about that? Other parameter we use to derive the electrical function is Simpson by plane or plane, where the probe is kept in the apical area again. But you, yes, sir. You can see all the four chambers. Yes, sir. Now I'll use it. See, you can see all the four chambers now. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Now what I'll do is I'll freeze this button. Okay. Now you can see. This is your left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. Right, right, right. Now I want to see what is the end diastolic volume, end systolic volume, correct? Yes. That's how do you derive that? Now what I do is now this is the end diastolic volume, this is the end systolic volume. Now how to get it? Now you see, you can see the caliper uh, calculator here. Yes, sir. I'll press this button, calculator button. You go to the main menu there, you come to this EF, EF volume, see you can see this EDU BP, yes, sir. 
by plane of things. Now I'll take this ED portion. Now I'll put it here. One, one here. Okay. Now put here. Get it here. This is what and diastolic volume. Are you clear? Yes, sir. Now I'll erase this part. You can see the valve movement there, you see? Yes, sir. This is right. I go to the ED, go to the back here. Then you can see here? PSC by plane. Then I'll take this PSC by plane. You put it here. And then you see. See? 2.54 is the end systolic volume. So, the formula what we use is n diastolic volume minus n systolic volume divided by n diastolic volume to you. So this is the Simpson formula what we use. Clear about that? The global longitudinal strain is another important parameter which is used in the evaluation of the particular function. For that larger strain, we take three views. Four chamber view, three chamber view, and two chamber view. How to get the four chamber view? Again, the probe is kept in the apical area. You can see this. And always remember that for that ECG should always be on. Okay, I will just I will rotate this. See, I am rotating this probe. See, now we can't even get two chamber. This is a two chamber view. Then I will further rotate this to get three chamber view. This is a three chamber view. See that yes, means left atrium, left ventricle, and diorta going. Out. So that is a three chamber. Clear? Now how to derive? Using these three views, we need to derive. Once you go to the review here, you click this. You click this, you get button there, Q lab. Okay? You just you press the Q lab, you get this. There is a thing called CMQ. This is cardiac motion quantification. CMQ yes. means. So you take this one button. This is a four chamber. You can see AP4? Yes, sir. I can take this AP4. And then I take this. This. And this. So this is what exactly you got, ejection fraction of 16.6%. This is how it looks like, global longitudinal strain. This is in the fourth chamber. This is in the fourth chamber. Clear? Now, I'll just acquire this. Again, I'll go to the review. You have two chamber view. Again, I can just go to the Q lab. Let's say it. Then I got CMQ. CMQ. Then I go to the two chamber view. Okay. This we are having LA and LV, right? Then yeah, this one you got one here. Yeah, LA LV, two chamber view. Then I go to this. So you got this 57.3. Okay. This is how the graph looks like. Can you see this? This is using the two chamber. What I'll do is I'll go to the other view also. What I'll do, I'll go to again review. Three chamber. There's no three chamber view showed, but anyway, we can do it. I'll go to this view here. Now I sorry, uh, I'll just yeah. so this is a three chamber view. I'll go to the Q lab. And I have three points here, 
is a three chamber. This is the left atrium open to the left ventricle and aorta. This is a three chamber view. And how did we get it? So the probe was kept here. And then I rotated like this, like this, like this, and it is around which position is this? This is around 10 o'clock position. So I could get this view. And then three points I'll take. I'll go to the CMQ and then I'll yeah, these are three one, two, three points I'll take. So this is what exactly you get the uh, global logic in the stream. So what we should do is we have to combine all the three. So how much we got? So we got global logic for approximately 154 divided by three, so it is 51. So that means you have to combine three chamber, the three. two chamber, and four chamber view, all the three, and divide by three. That will give you the ejection fraction. Global logic. Global this is very important because before the ejection fraction becomes abnormal. Yes, sir. This will pick up. That's why the global large strain is important. So, in the nutshell, left ventricular function, there are so many parameters to process the left ventricular function. But these are the basics. One, anybody can do this. So, the clinician who is taking care of the baby with some knowledge of echocardiography and consistency, he can perform these things, especially when the cardiologist is not available. And it is a dynamic process. You should keep on doing this in a baby which is sick to know whether the baby is improving or not, especially when the baby is on inotropes, uh, whether it is improving on inotropes or not. So thank you so much.